Previously on RVing to Alaska, we settle in for our five-day, 2100-mile voyage north to Alaska aboard the Alaska Marine Ferry, the Kennecott. Join us for a tour of our stateroom, the forward cruise lounge, and check out the cafeteria and its offerings, as well as enjoy some of the most amazing scenery as we cruise through the inside passage of British Columbia. Good morning, everyone. We are live from Ketchikan, Alaska. It is like seven something in the morning here in Alaska. I don't have my watch on. I'm barely rolled out of bed. Uh, but it is a beautiful day here. We are in the aft of the Kennecott. We are literally one room over from our stateroom on our on the cabin deck. And there's a nice little passageway. And uh, we, right above the ramp. So all the Ketchikan vehicles have already gotten off. All the Ketchikan passengers have gotten off and new walk-on passengers have come on. We uh, have not seen any vehicles come on yet, but uh, this is pretty cool. Let's, over here is the uh, Teslina Ferry. She's out of service and in for repair. And you can just see the top of the Columbia. <clears throat> She's also out of service. There's quite a few ferries out of service, but um, we've heard there's quite a bit of crew change today. Uh, some crew have been on the ship for as long as and eight weeks. Eight weeks, yes. and, and, and we can tell. You could tell they they were ready to get off. Yes. <laughs> but uh, so far, <laughs> that's scary. We're having an amazing cruise. I mean, the weather has been absolutely amazing um wow i forgot how beautiful it is here so here is the main channel that runs through town we have the airport let me turn this around the airport's right across the channel and uh as you can see it's a beautiful day i don't know we just had a seaplane go by uh, take off a few minutes ago, but we were filming a fire truck uh, Tower one being offloaded and being newly delivered to town But uh, yeah, downtown is quite that way. We're in the industrial side of town, but Guys, this is what it's looked like for the this past is three days south end of southeast Alaska. Yep yeah, It's gonna get even more beautiful Pretty amazing. Um, let's go back where the action is. Last night was really cool. I woke up at one in the morning when I heard my phone dinging. We came into cell service outside of Prince Rupert, right at the ferry. Um, and I looked out my window and the Northern Lights were dancing. So I quickly got dressed, masked up, went topside, found a dark spot and um, yeah. Watch the northern lights for a while. Yes, Vicki, it is a gorgeous day. I'd, I looked at my weather um, app. It said it was 41 with the sunshine. There's no wind. I, it feels like 50. It's comfortable. I'm just in a flannel uh, top and very comfortable. Sunshine helps too. But uh, as you can see, someone's picking up their doggy do. Uh, there's quite a few pets on board. Uh, they do a pet call every six hours or so. I believe it's 8.30, 2.30, 8.30, 30, and 12.30. So they get four chances for a 15 minute pet call. <laughs> he's, he's going potty. We'll censor that. Um, I'm sure the dog is does not want to come back on. We've met several friends. Um, uh, well, we all say hello 
you kind of you get little pods of people that you wave and smile and talk to when you're on a ship for several days but they have dogs and so they said the very first night the dog was a little nervous didn't eat uh, was very thankful to see them when they went down for the pet call uh, but by the second by the next morning the dog kind of understood what was going on was not as nervous so that's good to hear but um yeah life aboard the Kennecott it's been pretty nice yesterday we spent the whole day in the forward lounge we kind of took residence up in a, a booth and played cards all day oh <laughs> the dog the dogs the dog's like i don't want to go is he moving you no he's doing his business um but yeah we played cards all day watched the scenery, saw a couple of whale spouts, a couple of dolphins, um, a couple of eagles. We saw some flocks of geese coming north. So we're in port for three hours. We'll be leaving here at 11 a.m. And then uh, tomorrow morning we arrive in Juneau. And I believe it's a four hour stop in Juneau. I think we're there from eight till noon. And then uh, Wednesday morning, Yakutat. I will not be awake for that 5 a.m. port call. We're gone by 7, and then we arrive in Whitt Whittier Thursday morning at 6 a.m. So I just wanted to check in. Tomorrow you'll probably see us from Juno tomorrow morning. We'll do another live. Uh, as I have cell signal, I do post pictures. Um, and yeah, leave any questions and comments. I'll try to answer. Uh, anything that I see uh, that you want answered and uh, maybe tomorrow when we're in Port and Juno I'll go up uh, on the sun deck and uh, show you what that looks like and maybe all the way up to the solar solarium where the campers tent camp on the deck so it's quite interesting all right guys you have a wonderful what is today today's Monday have a wonderful Monday morning. Uh, enjoy yourselves. Know Alaska is waiting for you. No matter how you get up here, either by RV, by flying, or taking the Alaska Marine Highway north to Alaska. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day. Catch a Can Alaska is truly the beginning of the last frontier. Off the road system, Catch a Can is a southernmost entrance to Alaska's famed Inside Passage, a network of waterways that snake through some of the most jaw-droppingly beautiful wilderness in the world. Ketchikan is best known for three things, feisty salmon, epic scenery, and its incredibly rich Alaska native culture. RV camping in Ketchikan, believe it or not, is possible. Options are limited with two national forest campgrounds and one state recreational campground located within Ketchikan's small road system. Unfortunately, the one and only RV park, Clover Pass Resort, has closed their RV park indefinitely. Our stay in Ketchikan was short, just long enough to load Ketchikan passengers and vehicles off and on the ship and soon we found ourselves cruising the beautiful waterways of Southeast Alaska with our next port of call scheduled for the next morning in the state capital of Juneau, Alaska. Did you know the ferries of the Alaska Marine Highway make up a large part of Alaska's highway system? Covering 3,500 miles of coastline and 35 communities that stretch from Bellingham, Washington to Dutch Harbor in the Aleutian Chain. Alaska ferries are diverse and range from mainland ferries that sail thousands of miles and make multiple stops, such as the one we are on now, to shuttle ferries that provide daily links between neighboring communities. This allows riders the flexibility to access communities of choice by utilizing one or more vessels to reach their final destination 
through regional hubs in Ketchikan, Juneau, Whittier, or Homer. Not too bad, not too bad at all. Yeah, there's the clouds coming out, car coming in though, so it's blocking the sun a little bit. Uh, man, cannot complain about this cruise. Oh my god, it's been nice. Beautiful, guys. The ferry trip from Bellingham to Whittier is beautiful. At least the first three days. At least the first three days were amazing, yeah, holy cow. But I just, even if it is wavy and windy and stuff, the views, the, the mountains around are amazing, awesome. Um, it's not something that you're gonna see in a regular cruise ship. You know, you, they don't go inside like this boat does. And if they do, they cruise at night. Right, you miss a lot of it at night. Um, highly recommend this, guys, do it. Yeah, it's a little expensive to put the RV on there. You don't have to you don't do have it. With to. An you RV. can rent an RV up there in Alaska too. You know, take the ferry, walk aboard, rent an RV up there. Well, I guess you got to get to the rental place. But anyway, you know, figure out a way. So we've come out of Sumner Strait through Decision Pass, and we're heading up. I don't know what that strait is over there, but it's a big one. Do you want to explain what we're using so we know all this? Yes. Yeah, so while we're in our boating, little limited boating experience, we have come across an app called Navionics Boating. Um, and it's something that is a subscription-based app that you can download on either iPhone or Android, whichever platform you have. And it gives you, once you download it and subscribe, it gives you access to different charts, uh, navigational charts that include a wealth of information for any boater who's navigating the waters. Uh, and you can download specific areas that you were going to be in. Uh, for example, when we left Bellingham the other day, I knew we were going to Ketchikan, so I downloaded the Bellingham to Ketchikan uh, a portion of the uh, inside passage area, and I was able to follow it and, and zoom in at, at incredible levels to see a lot of detail, like individual rocks, and there's notes on anchorages, um, and there's information about moorages and different ports and different little towns and what they have to offer. And passages. And, and tells all about these passages. And lighthouses. And depth of some of the narrows and, and tides and currents, which are very important to know when you're in a, a slow go trawler kind of boat. Um, it's just a huge amount of information that has been fun to use on this trip, but it'll be, it'll be oh, uh, something we have to have in the future when we uh, start boating these waters. Beautiful, amazing place. Water crashing way over the rocks. Love yeah, it. but let's see if I can zoom in. And see the waves crashing. And basically we're broadside to the Pacific Ocean right now. So, you know, this is this is what the Pacific Ocean is feeding us. This <laughs> horribly crazy water right now. This is just mean and turbulent. No. It can be, oh, can it ever be. So just know that and respect that. But uh, this is we're, we're so fortunate to have such a well, um, flat calm day. It's great. Even this, this is flat calm. I don't care what yeah. anybody says. It's unprotected this water. Is, this is flat calm. <laughs> All right, one more look, and then I'm going in. It's cold. All righty, let's go inside. Warm a little bit. So while we're out and about, whoo, sound like I'm a tin can. Oh wait, I am. Hello. Um, maybe we'll go up to the solar solarium. Maybe we'll go up to the solarium and check out where they go tenting. But we have a different view. Oh wow, look at that fog bank. Huge fog bank hanging over the mountains right there. And then as the island ends, the clouds fall into the Pacific Ocean and kind of just lay across the Pacific Ocean. That's beautiful. Oh man. So that's almost, well, west is kind of more that way. Um, hopefully, when we make this corner more, we'll be able to see a bit more of the, well, we're not going to see much sunset, but we can see some light clouds where the skies are, or the sun is. But this is the open Pacific Ocean, folks. This is, that's next next stop, uh, Hawaii, or no, actually, probably Japan. not Hawaii, probably. I don't know. 
I don't know. They, I, I don't know if they can hear us well. It's a little noisy back here. But let's go up to the solarium deck. All right. We'll take the elevator up. All right, we're gonna give you a tour of a couple more spaces of the boat. This is called the solarium deck, and it's all enclosed on the Kennecott. And you can tent camp up here for free. I don't believe this room, I don't see signs you can't, but uh, we're going to go in the next room. There's two different rooms where you can pitch your tent and camp for free on the Kennecott. We do have a nice viewing up here. Again, here is where we were looking without the reflection. The uh, Pacific Ocean is uh, right out there. and. The islands and right there and a really cool try to get the flexion out really cool cloud bank going on right now this is also the same level that the uh, bridge is from uh, just forward of here is the actual bridge where uh, the boats operate from you can see it right up there two wing stations on either side port and starboard but we're not allowed on the deck, but you can see there's a chair there. Very cool. All right, let's go check out the tents. I do have to say it's pretty warm. They get plenty of sunshine. I think it's heated. So here you can see a tent pitched here and someone has their hammock and someone's uh, lounging on some lounge chairs. But uh, again, not bad uh, room with a view for free. There's some big mountains coming up. All right. Oh, and there's also lockers that you can rent. Looks like $1 for each use. All right, let's go next door to the other room. As you can tell, this mirrors uh, the other side. We'll walk out the other side, and, but we got one tenter on this side. And windows above. outside it's a fresh air space but still covered and uh, so I guess if it's a really hot day or you want to be out here you could I don't see any signs saying you can't pitch a tent back here but I think most people especially in this type of weather go inside let's go check out the restroom and see what public facilities with showers look like Here's the shower stall, pretty basic, and you can lock yourself in for privacy, and uh, you can run a towel if you want at the purser's desk. Next, we're gonna go to the aft lounges. There's an upper and lower deck. We'll go check that out. These are some steep stairs. Holy cow.
very stern of the boat. There's a walk around um, railing in this one. As you can see. Oh. Also not a bad view. Sometimes. Okay, we're gonna go inside. You better mask up. There's a employee. Hello. Hello. Hi. Thank you. you? That surface. All right. So this is the upper aft lounge, and you can sleep. For free back here. Um, I read a sign the other day stating is that as far as it reclines yep. that sleeping bags have to be put away from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. So after 8 p.m. you can sleep like this. Sleep in a reclining position. Okay. Hello. And uh Watch the stars. Oh, this would be a cool place to watch. Well, going south, watch the northern lights. Yeah, not gonna see it. Not going north. Going north. There is a restroom right here and water fountain. All right, we're going down one more deck to the lower aft lounge. Coming in. But, oh, look at the light, pretty. And here's the channel we're going to be going up. Now this is the main deck that the cafeteria, the forward lounge is on. And now we're going to go into the lower aft lounge. This mimics the one upstairs pretty much, but it has a second row of chairs. So, got a restroom. And again. So that's basically the ship. Yeah, we can go forward over here. So you can walk most of all the way around the ship on this level cutting through this corridor here so in the morning we see a lot of people just doing laps all day long or all morning long to get the morning exercise in so it's a good way to do it so this is another we are broadside whatsoever. Right. This is what the We're very lucky considering today is April 19th. I believe it's April 19th. And uh, I was really nervous about taking a mid-April sailing thinking we'd get some major weather. And so far, Mother Nature has blessed. You know it's supposed to be more of a rainy day, and I can see that happening now with all the clouds coming in. But I guess after Juno, it's supposed to clear up again, and uh, through Yakutat and across the, uh, the Gulf. Gulf of Alaska, it's supposed to be more clear. I don't know about temperatures, but it's supposed to be more clear. Yeah, it's getting cold. Yep. All right, let's go forward. This is going to take us up past the galley. You might see the workers preparing food. Here's the galley. So, one of the cooks. You can smoke on the boat on the port side outside. 
here's more of the galley and cafe. And then, oh, the lounge. This is a lounge that you could basically a quiet lounge. Popsicle in Alaska. Hold on, I just gotta show this mountain. can't see out of my glasses. Those that have littles, they have a play area too. And I'll swing the camera around and show it to you. No toys, but a safe place for them to play. Have you subscribed to our channel yet and hit that notification bell? Be sure to do so if you haven't already so you don't miss out on our next video in this series when we stop at our next port of call in Juneau, the state capital, as well as encounter some rougher seas as we enter the mighty Gulf of Alaska, as we continue north towards our final destination of Whittier and our future home of Houston, Alaska.